Jane, I just want to read a definition of dyslexia from the BDA handbook uh, and just see whether you agree with it. Um, dyslexia is a specific learning difficulty that mainly affects the development of literacy and language-related skills. It is likely to be present at birth and to be lifelong in its effects. It is characterised by difficulties with phonological processing, rapid naming, working memory, processing speed and the automatic development of skills that may not match up to an individual's other cognitive abilities. It tends to be resistant to conventional teaching methods, but its effects can be mitigated by appropriately specific intervention, including the application of information technology and supportive counselling. Jane, is this a definition that you agree with? Well, there have been many definitions over the years, and the points made there generally do encompass most of the main points. Um, so it's a very good starting point for beginning to understand what dyslexia is. And, um, I mean, is it a disease? Can, can one catch dyslexia? Is that a useful way of thinking about it? Um, well, some people do feel a little nervous when they hear about it, but you certainly can't catch it. Um, however, it does seem to be inherited. Um, but we're at the early stages of understanding all this because although it is a genetic condition, we don't really know which genes are involved. It seems to be a disease that affects more boys than girls. A, is that accurate? B, why might that be? Well, once again, it isn't really a disease, but right. it's certainly a condition right, okay. that does affect more boys than girls. Um, this also isn't uh, very well understood. Um, certainly boys are more susceptible to developmental problems in early language development and once again we don't really understand why. There have been various theories over the years wondering if it's to do with an imbalance of testosterone in the womb or things like that but really um, nobody's got to the, the answer to, to that but certainly there are a lot more boys than girls and Quite often when girls are dyslexic, they don't seem to be as severe as many boys for some reason. Because what's actually happening in the brain with dyslexia? I mean, um, is there, are there specific cognitive difficulties as opposed to a normal processor? Um, well, perhaps I'll answer that in two parts, because we can think about what has happened in the actual physical brain and certain people have um, done autopsies on dyslexic brains and in fact found something strange that the two hemispheres in dyslexics tend to be the same size whereas dare we say normal brains um, often the left hemisphere is larger than the right so there seems to be actually something that happens to the hemispheres in growth also there seems to be something strange that happens with um, the uh, neurons in the brain as they as the brain is developing in the womb. Um, so it's definitely not a question of brain damage, mm. it's a question of brain difference. And the scientists are busy trying to work out more about this. And, and how do those differences actually affect day-to-day -day life? What's being affected by being dyslexic? Well, the, the main definition um, is perhaps um, it affecting the way a person analyzes um, sounds and words around them. Dyslexia used to be known as word blindness. If you know nothing about dyslexia, you might say, oh, isn't it being word blind? Perhaps the core definition is more related to being ear blind. Right. So it's nothing to do with being deaf. Mm. But, for example, if a child um, hears the word cat, they may easily associate it with an actual cat but they might not be able to perceive that the word cat is made of the three sounds k, at. Right. And equally, when they try and spell, they might be able to um, say the sounds k, at, but they might not then be able to write it down. This talk is uh, for parents. Um, what might a parent really be looking out for in very, very early children that might suggest uh, dyslexic tendencies? Well, when they're at nursery school, um, they could be late to actually start speaking. Um, and the ones with auditory uh, memory difficulties might actually find it difficult to learn nursery rhymes. Right. So all the other children might be actually joining in with nursery rhymes. And the potentially dyslexic child 
might uh, just be making noises and sounds because they haven't actually learned the words very easily. Um, so they can have a language delay and evidence of memory dif difficulties for following instructions and things like that. But, but to be clear here, and not to cause any anxiety, if a child is not singing a nursery rhyme, it doesn't mean that he or she is necessarily dyslexic. No, I mean obviously yeah. one can't... There are, Dyslexia is a syndrome, yeah. and just because you don't know your left from your right, or just because you aren't singing a nursery rhyme, it, it wouldn't be enough to diagnose. You have to have many signs, yeah. but that is quite a key sign if a child um, doesn't pick up um, early speech and language and things like nursery rhymes and learning the alphabet. And, and can, I mean, what you've been talking about is a lot to do with words. Can dyslexia affect maths at all? Or? Um, yes, it can. Um, obviously we've talked about memory issues and there's something called working memory because if you want to calculate or count you often have to hold something in mind while you're calculating and even if you're counting on three you have to hold something in your mind. So yes, um, the memory issues can affect maths. And I um, read a sort of banner recently that said dyslexia need not be a disaster. I mean, surely that's something you agree with. Does that sound like a sensible... Yes, I think, obviously, it's a very good idea for early intervention. Yeah. I always say to parents, well, if it's in the family and you're concerned, why not start giving them some extra help? Because if they are dyslexic, it's good to start early. Yeah. And if they're not, it can only help them to get off to a good start. So you can't lose either way if there are concerns. Um, so certainly it need not be a disaster, and certainly I've seen many um, young um, dyslexics go on to make um, a great success of their lives and to do well at, at school. I've seen a lot who go into photography and architecture, and they may be the classic dyslexic who has trouble with sounds, but um, they may have um, gifts or strengths in the visual areas, and they may be able to visualise buildings and the space within buildings in 3D um, and they don't realise they've got a gift, it's just later on when they're talking to people yeah. they realise that other people can't do that. Yeah. So certainly uh, that is, is, can be an area of strength um, and uh, certainly many of the students that I've taught over the years have gone on to do very well at university mm. and gone into um, academic professions, yes.